Hey guys, welcome to episode 10 of Omni Factory. I've been busy automating some more things between episodes, so I think I'll start off by showing you that today. Uh, but the general plan is to get into HV, we're going to build some more HV blast furnaces, and we're going to start on the vacuum freezer to get more advanced ingots and coils. Uh, maybe, possibly even cryogenic air distillation today as well. So to recap, we set this system up for epoxy boards last time. We, made it, we make our epoxy resin over there, and uh, this gets us all the circuit boards we need for uh, the circuits. We don't actually need this fibre reinforced at the moment, since we don't have access to these nano circuits yet. But I decided just to automate it, since we're going to need it in the future anyway. I also just got done setting up this last blast furnace here. It does share a side with the other ones. Um, so this is our stainless steel one here. We're currently out of chrome actually. Uh, and I added this one for silicon bulls. These are really, really slow. I think it's 300 seconds. Yeah, it's 300 seconds per recipe, so I'm just stocking a couple of those just now. That'll probably get switched over once we get glowstone doped bulls, because I don't think you need both. I could be wrong on that. Um, no, it looks like they make all the same ones. Yeah, it looks like they can make all the same ones, so this will eventually get swapped out, but it's good to have it passive for now. A couple of other things I added here, I uh, started setting up some passive steel production. So we just have a, an interface supplying carbon and iron. The iron is getting smelted in this furnace and we're storing some as raw iron just to stock some of that. We're alloy smelting some of it with carbon dust and that gives us steel. So both of these things are connected via storage bus. Yeah, here. I thought I'd forgot to put the storage bus on there. Uh, no. So yeah, we're stocking steel. We still have to add things like end steel dark steel, electrical steel, so that'll go along this line here. I've also added a couple more assemblers to the end of this. These are just very simple um, assemblers with interfaces on them in order to have patterns in them. And these have various circuits, so this one's configuration 8. Well, this is an extruder. Um, this one is configuration 1. This one has polyethylene in it, which is being supplied by this fluid interface. This extruder is just for normal pipes. And this was because I was running out of medium stainless steel pipes for something or another. Yeah, HV pumps. So yeah, just I'm basically just adding machines as I'm needing them. As you can see, the interface terminal's grown quite a bit with new patterns. So yeah, onto what we're doing today, which is the vacuum freezer. I did already craft this block. It's not really too bad. It's just some HV pumps and tier three sir or sorry tier four circuits. This does take the tier fours. So we have our vacuum freezer here. This will freeze hot ingots. If we look in JEI under hot ingot, these are what come out of blast furnaces. So things like um, nichrome, which we're going to be making today. Um, nickel plus, plus chrome in the blast furnace gives you the hot ingot and then you have to cool it in the vacuum freezer. Luckily this is quite a fast process. So we can get away with sharing a vacuum freezer for multiple blast furnaces. And in fact we might not only even need one and we'll just overclock it. Uh, I'm not sure yet, but anyways, the quest asks for 22 frostproof machine casings. Have those here. We need a energy input bus. Might as well encode the recipe for that. And we'll also need some input and output buses. I have those encoded. I think ULV will be fine. We just need one slot in each. So yeah, let's go set this up. Um, question is though, where do I want to put this? Actually, before we set up this freezer and blast furnaces, let's think about what we want to put inside. So, obviously we want canthal dust, but canthal dust requires aluminium dust, which we're getting from clay electrolysis. It requires iron dust and chrome dust. The chrome dust is not something we can make, aut well, we can kind of make it automatically right now, but I don't think it's worth it. I'm just going to keep putting ruby through the ore processing. Uh, but as for iron, we can stock this automatically, which we should set up right now actually. So over here where we have our steel, I think I'll add another macerator. Order one macerator. And watch our automation at work now. Yeah, the wire coating, maybe I'll have to upgrade that machine to HV, and because that is really slow. But that is probably pretty much our only bottleneck at the moment. So there's a macerator. Um, you can put this down, filter it for iron. And this is on round robin. Yes, it is nice. So now we're getting iron dust. We can draw that as well. 
there that can go in that drawer and actually I'm going to change this up so that the control we're inserting on the controller rather than these things it just it's a bit cleaner that way there and we'll move all of these drawers to be in line with what they're making so wrought iron above wrought iron steel above steel iron dust above iron dust and we'll also need a trim for here using the trim is just basically like a dummy drawer it's like cable basically for drawers it allows you to connect the controller to a different set of drawer networks so that's now getting us iron dust we need for our canthal and also our stainless steel let's also just quickly get a batch of chrome as well i don't know if i have any ruby in the ore processing i've just been throwing things in here as we need it okay let's just buy some more ruby ore uh three stacks sure that'll that'll go quite a long way once we put it through this system so for the next step let's set up a blast furnace for our canthal we have those on autocraft now there's two blast furnaces we'll need heat proofs let's add those to the assembler along with the invar components i'm not sure what i'm going to do about automating invar i don't know if i want a alloy smelter for it if we just want a passive this i don't know how much invar we're actually going to need is the problem i mean i guess we'll need it for blast furnaces but i don't know if we need like thousands and thousands of this so we'll order some of the casings as well and we might as well make this HV. Oh, looks like we're missing some more Cooper Nickel. Yeah, we're going to put in Cooper Nickel coils for now, and then we'll swap them out as soon as we can. And then I think the plan is to use the Cooper Nickel coils out of that and put it in a multi smeller. While the um, Cooper Nickel smelts, let's set up our vacuum freezer just to clean up my inventory here. I don't really want to put this stuff back and then have to find it again. So I don't know if this is. A th yeah, it looks like it's 3x3. Three Let's see, so I moved it over a couple of blocks, I wanted to leave some space on this side. I think we'll put out, output on the left, input on the right, which is a bit backwards, but <laughs> I think it'll, it doesn't really matter to be honest, I don't think. Yeah, so now we have a HV vacuum freezer that we can't really do much with right at the moment. And I think we'll put the blast furnace on the other side, so I think we'll have a row of blast furnaces along here. And then we'll use the space next to the freezer for more chemical things. And uh, I guess we'll put it in line with this, actually. We'll leave some space here just in case we want to do anything with these fluids. I'm not sure we will, but uh, I'd rather leave the space than have to move things about. So we'll build another blast furnace here. We'll leave that there for later because we're almost certainly going to have to build more than one. Uh, we'll put HV on this. More heat proofs. And we need the nichrome. Or not nichrome, cooper nickel, I mean. And we need 16 coils. We're missing 24 ingots. Okay, our coils are now crafting up. I'm just thinking here, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Maybe I should have just yoinked one of these blast furnaces since we're not using the um, annealed copper right now. We don't have this one running, so maybe we should have thrown some nichrome through there. Or canthal, sorry. I keep calling it nichrome. Canthal through there. And then wait till we could get better coils. Oh well, it's built now, so <laughs> mistakes were made, but that's okay. So we'll put our coils down. And our heat proofs, input bus, output bus. And we'll do the same thing as we've done over there with the stainless steel. We'll put a crafter on here uh, with an interface supplying the various dusts that we need for um, Cantho. We'll have to hook this up to ME power. Item conduit for the output. We'll put in the Cantho recipe in the auto crafter and set the interface for iron, aluminium dust, and chrome dust. Uh, this is the only 29 I have so far. I'm going to just put this in manually. And then we'll put a limit item filter on here. Alright, so these uh, these inputs on the autocrafter are filling up. We're making our first pieces of canthal. In fact, is that the quest? No, it wants the ingot. Okay. So this should now be going into the input bus, which it is. Nice. And our blast furnace is running. Oh, in fact, before we set the output on this, uh, let's... Since we're, go we're going to get hot ingots here. Yeah, we are going to get hot ingots. So we want to set up our freezer now. And the way I'm going to do that is with a chest with a Greg Tech filter on there. Let me get one of those and I'll show you what I mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a Greg Tech chest on the input bus. And then we're going to have a storage bus on the Greg Tech chest with an ore dictionary filter set in between the both of them. We have to set this for the ore dictionary filter for the hot ingots, which looks like it's ingot hot. So like this. 
and then star for wild card. Yeah, so filter insert every hot ingot and that will go into this chest. And then we will have a robot arm on here. Importing... No, we want export. And we can just export everything in this chest. So now all incoming items into our system. Or sorry, all incoming hot ingots into our system will be placed in this chest. And we want this on high priority. Actually, do we have to filter this storage bus as well? I'm not sure about that, to be honest. I don't think so, since we have a filter on the on the chest itself. And since this is the highest... Like, if I, let's just set it to like 5,000. So, so now if we extract these canthal, should it go into this chest? It looks like it already went in. And yeah, it's already working perfectly. Nice, nice. Maybe I want to change this to supply exact one. So there's only ever one in there at, at a time. Uh, well, on second thought, I don't think that actually matters. We'll just transfer any. And then what we can do is just put a interface on the side of this. Like that. And then import it back into our system. That should have extracted. Yeah, it did. So now if we check our terminal, we should see cancel on there. And why are we seeing the hot versions? Is that because we have this... Yeah, there is no hot versions in here. So we shouldn't be... Ha that shouldn't happen unless it just extracted before I could set the filters or something. It's gonna hurt. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. And I'll have to keep an eye on that, but I don't think... That shouldn't happen again, to be honest. And why are we also seeing cancel dust? That shouldn't be the case either. The canthal should be going straight into the input bus. Oh, the crafter's probably giving it to the interface because the crafter ejects the items. That makes sense. Okay, so we'll have to move this interface to here. Connect it with conduit and then connect the item output. And we'll also put a machine controller with a level emitter. Uh, so just so we don't burn through all the chrome. Alright, so you know what? Let's actually switch away from doing... Uh, some more blast furnace work. I was taking a look at the quest book for the next steps and um, there's a page here that we kind of like skipped over so we've this is the early game tab we've mostly completed this. I still have to get a multi smeller um, which I probably will end up doing very very soon that's a bit long overdue as well. So this is the early game tab and then the mid game we were working on this one However, the Into the Microverse we've more or less just skipped over, and I think I would like to circle back to this. These Microverse quests uh, let us get Micro Miners, and the Micro Miners are miners that you can send out using the Microverse projector, and they will return items for you. So if you look at the, like, the recipe here, it's a multi-block structure like this, and then you use these um, tier, well there's different tiers of Micro Miners, you use these inputs. We're going to need to make rocket fuel, uh, quantum flux, and then the microminer itself, and it gives you a bunch of ores. So I think you can select which one you want based on the inputs. So this one is like ultra dense hydrogen, this one's gemstone sensors, and quantum flux, and this one's just a chest, and it gives you a bunch of ores. This is going to be useful for getting things like root oil, which we need for titanium. We're going to get uh, salt ore from this, which is going to help our chlorine. Nickel, which we don't have a good source of. Iron, that's not really important. Cassiterite, we can get redstone this way. Uh, moon turf, there's a lot of decent things that we need from this. Appetite and phosphor, we're going to need those later on as well, I believe. So I think this is a good thing to start investing in right now. And I think we'll start just where the quest starts, up here at Rocket Fuel. Well, all of these want us to make um, various fluids and chemicals in order to get to Rocket Fuel which we need to power the microminer. So it wants us to make hypochlorous acid, and uh, we already make that over here. Where is it? This one here makes hypochlorous acid. I don't know if this will be able to keep up. Um, I'm going to add probably a steel drum with a storage bus on here. We'll just steal some of this to use for a rocket fuel. But if it turns out we need more, I'll probably set up a dedicated chemical reactor, probably HV. I'm going to be doing all of this at HV. So let's actually start at this one. So we need hypochlorous acid and then we have to make chloramine. Let's get a bucket for the quest as well. There it is. Let's also, while we're at it, just clean up some of the other quests as well. So we'll get a bucket of 
each of these fluids. So heavy fuel should be a quest. Yep. Refinery gas. Light fuel. And diesel. Alright, so to make our rocket fuel, we're going to need a centrifuge, air collectors, some chemical reactors, and various applied energistics tools. So to make our rocket fuel, we'll start with a chemical reactor. And we'll supply that with hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and a circuit on one. That gives us carbon monoxide. Oh wait, wrong fluid. <laughs> This is supposed to be on three. Whoops. Let's uh, take this out and replace this with three. Yeah, I thought that was a bit fast. We'll save the carbon monoxide for something else later on. We're supposed to be getting methanol here. Yeah, this is what we want. So we'll auto output the methanol into a drum as a buffer. Complete the quest. Next, we'll place our air collector into a centrifuge. So now we're getting nitrogen and oxygen. We want the nitrogen to go into this tank and then into this chemical reactor. So I'm going to put an electric pump on here and we'll filter this for nitrogen. So now this tank's filling with nitrogen. The oxygen we're going to send up and trash the excess. Like so. We then want, con want to combine the nitrogen and hydrogen with cir circuit 1. This is going to give us ammonia. And we can auto output that into a drum. Complete the quest. Next we're going to put some fluid storage buses on here. And we'll partition those for ammonia and methanol. Then we're going to have another chemical reactor supplied with ammonia and our hypochlorous acid. Which is from over there. I just need to hook this up and set the inserts. Okay, this is going to give us chloramine. Next we have to combine our ammonia with methanol. So we need another chemical reactor here. This is going to make dimethylamine for us. Both of these outputs produce a byproduct of water, so we're going to throw those out. So I've just set a fluid trash can here with um, LV pumps exporting the water. That's just getting trashed. And then we want the chloramine and the dimethylamine to go into their own tanks. Like so. And we'll get both quests. There's chloramine and dimethylamine. And the second to last step is to make 1,1-dimethylhydrazine. Which I'm assuming is combining just the two of these. Yes, it is. Nice. So we need another chemical reactor, which I have to request. There it is. So we're going to do the usual putting a fluid storage bus on here for chloramine. One for dimethylamine as well. And then we'll filter the last chemical reactor for both of those fluids. There, so now this this is going to give us the 1,1-dimethylhydrazine. I think that's the right name. So many different chemical names. <laughs> Which it does, and it also gives us a hydrochloric acid byproduct. And we'll complete the quest. There it is. Alright, now that we have our 1,1-dimethylhydrazine, the last step is to make rocket fuel. And the quest mentions here, we can swap out oxygen in the recipe and use dinitrogen tetro tetroxide. I think I definitely do want to do that instead of oxygen. And I think the easiest way to do that is just using nitrogen dioxide with circuit 2. So let's also set that up then. Let's set up another chemical reactor with nitrogen dioxide to make dinitrogen tetroxide. And then we'll use a mixer to combine that with our 1,1-dimethylhydrazine to make rocket fuel. So I've set up two more chemical reactors. One is making nitrogen dioxide auto output into the other one, making dinitrogen tetroxide and then we'll output this to the mixer with our 1,1-dimethylhydrazine so auto output there like so and then we have to get this fluid in there as well so we'll put a fluid interface on top of the mixer filter this for 1,1-dimethylhydrazine and then we'll put a pump on insert to insert the fluid onto the mixer Invert this to import, there we go. And plug it in. Like so. This should now be getting the fluid. Yes, it is. Nice. And we're making rocket fuel. Well, quite a lot of it as well. And I guess we'll do the usual, put that into a buffer as well. Alright, I don't know if this buffer is going to be big enough. 
but it looks like it produces quite fast anyway. I might replace it with a quantum tank, I did make one of those, but uh, we'll see. At least the production is now set up, and we might as well put a fluid storage bus on here for rocket fuel. And we'll get the quest as well. Alright, so the next steps is to actually make the micro miners. Uh, I guess that's what this is for here. Uh, eventually getting down to this quest here. The micro miner recipe itself is quite in depth. It uh, does require quite a few components. There's a lot of uh, plates in there, uh, wires, a lot of nested steps. Uh, there's some rods in there as well. So I took the time and also set up some other arrays. So we have compressor arrays and lathe arrays. The compressor is going to be for the plating for these micro miners. It's going to be for this recipe here for the steel plates. And we can also use it for other things as well, obviously. And we also have lathes, so for rods and screws, things like that can go in the lathe. Uh, I've set up more or less exactly the same as this one. We have the interface here going into the drawer system. They're all inserted into the machines with robot arms on this face here. And then extracted back into the interface with the item conduit. Actually, that reminds me, I haven't placed these robot arms yet, so I'd pro it'd probably help if I actually did place them. There, so that's all the robot arms placed now. And another two arrays set up. However, I think we're just about running out of time here for today. So I'm going to leave it here. I'll probably set up some more automation. A couple of more machines, just like I did over there as well. Maybe I'll set up the steel. But yeah, next time we're going to continue the progress for micro miners. I'm not sure exactly what else this will entail. So we might end up down another rabbit hole or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. That's going to do it today. Thank you again for watching and see you in the next one.